with the most recent 6.7.0 release into DBD came a slew of massive changes for both sides of the game. It's been almost a month since these changes rolled out, so let's talk about how the game has felt since they went live. If you've been playing DBD in the last 365 days, you've probably seen a lot of this. And this. And this. The last year saw rise to one of the most oppressive killer metas ever seen in the game, with the addition of Call of Brian into the game and the buffing of Eruption and Overcharge created an insane synergy that at times was virtually uncounterable. This allowed killers to spend almost the entire match just sitting on three gens of their choice and seldomly ever committing to a chase, creating one of the most linear and unfun to play against gameplay loops ever introduced into DVD. Eruption was actually nerfed in the prior 6.6.0 patch, but Call of Brian and Overcharge were still running rampant. The release of 6.7.0 saw Call of Brian and Overcharge being significantly tuned down in an attempt to try and encourage more build variety. We also saw other killer perks, such as Pain Resonance get reworked to only having four uses per match, but as a trade-off, the amount of regression it provides has been buffed to one-fourth of a gen with the most progress, as well as Gearhead being buffed from a near unusable state to actually being a fairly respectable aura perk. On the survivor side, we saw the likes of Dead Hard get a long-awaited change, now only working after you've previously been hooked, meaning each survivor can only use it up to twice a match apiece. I personally find this to be an acceptable change for both sides, as no longer having dead hard occur early game allows the killer to push out more pressure on the survivors, allowing the game to be more engaging since it's more viable to go for chases now, rather than just protecting a 3 gen as soon as you spawn in with Call of Brian Overcharge and Eruption. They also added in a new visual heartbeat terror radius for people who may be hard of hearing. This has been a feature in Dead by Daylight Mobile for quite a few years now and is nice to finally see in the flagship version of the game. They also removed the light burn mechanic from the game, meaning that killers like the nurse can no longer be light burned out of her blinks, the hag's traps can no longer be destroyed by shining a flashlight at it, the wraith can no longer be stunned by a flashlight is another huge change for wraith overall. In fact, in a lot of ways, this patch has made the wraith a very fearsome killer now that first chase dead hard is gone from the game, as well as the fact that he can no longer be light burned while cloaked as well as the artist's crows no longer being affected by flashlights, including her crow swarms and dire crows. Spirit is also no longer able to be burned while her husk is out. So originally in the PTB for this update, they lessened how quickly you would overheat while revving Hillbilly's chainsaw and chase. However, in exchange, they nerfed his best add-ons, being his engravings, which was a bit of a boneheaded decision that they ultimately went back on after backlash from the community. And they did keep the buff to the overheat mechanic as well, so they did make right on that in the end. They also had a few other miscellaneous little changes to some other killer's add-ons. However, one of the biggest changes that caused quite a backlash in the PTB for this chapter was them initially slowing down all healing to 24 seconds across the board. I think some people did experiments in the PTB, and there were times where it would take almost 4 minutes of self-care healing straight in order for them to go from injured to healthy, which was kind of insane. They did tone it down a little bit and reverted it back to at least 16 seconds for altruistic heals. However, they did touch up medkits in order to make them less powerful and impactful. So now if you use a medkit on yourself, it takes 24 seconds in order to complete the heal. They also changed most of the medkit add-ons in order to be online with their current vision for medkits. Another thing is that they did change Boon's circle of healing so you could no longer heal yourself inside of it, requiring it to be a more team-oriented perk. They also added in being able to see the auras of injured survivors within radius of the Boon in order to provide information in solo queue matches as to where your injured teammates may be.
So with all of that said, I do want to touch on my experiences with these changes. Now that it's been roughly three to four weeks since this update went live, I thought that enough time has passed where I can give my general experience in this current era of Dead by Daylight. And I want to start with the nerfing of gen kick perks like Call of Brian and Overcharge. So in a lot of cases, you would see a lot of people running builds like that on Killer in order to make up for lost time you'd receive from having three to four dead hearts in every single match. Dead hard being in every game would create a lot of scenarios where a lot of chases were just a waste of your time because right when you were just about to get them down, they would dead hard to a pallet or a window and the chase would continue on. So in response to that, a lot of killers adopted a play style where they would just wait for the survivor to come to them instead. With both sides getting those respective perks nerfed, it allows chases to overall be more engaging for the killer, as the killer can now begin chase in the beginning of the match and get there down without it being extended, which means the killer is more often able to mount and spread pressure before 2-3 gens pop. On the flip side, survivors no longer have to play gen tag against a killer who causes a generator to regress so many times that you basically have to do the same gen three or four times before you're able to actually pop it. These last few weeks have been some of the most enjoyable matches I've had in Dead by Daylight in quite a while, equally on both sides. As I generally play a wide variety of killers on the roster, this change has been a pretty substantial quality of life improvement for M1 killers, as oftentimes it feels like you would be punished for playing a run of the mill M1 killer because of the sheer power of dead hard, especially factoring in 3 to 4 of them a match. So now I can play a killer like the clown or the wraith just as an example and be able to, as already mentioned, mount more pressure than I would have been able to before when the entire lobby was running dead hard. And my survivor matches have also felt like less of a slog because I don't have to do the same generator four times before I'm finally able to finish it. I feel like it also helps that I never ran dead hard at all before this patch came out, so it's not really as much of a hit to me as it may be to a lot of other people. I did used to run med kits with tons of charges though on Survivor, along with multiple healing perks prior to the change, so unfortunately I do feel this med kit nerf, but I feel like it was completely necessary regardless, as there were times that I was healing myself in less than 8 seconds, and it became absolutely ridiculous when you really think about it in retrospect. And I also do want to touch a little bit on the boon change again. So typically I do play in a four man swift and they did raise the healing speed from 50% of boon circle of healing back to 100. So if you slap on two or three circle of healings in a swift, as well as, you know, somebody having botany knowledge on, the heals do go back to being absolutely ridiculous. However, I can't really seem to recall personally encountering this too often on killer. And I've played about 40 hours since this update went live of killer. Overall, I do feel like the recent changes have been significant and created an overall more balanced and enjoyable gameplay experience for both killers and survivors, and it's definitely a step in the right direction for behavior. Do you agree with these sentiments, or has your experience been different than mine? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, I do stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash absolved live. If you'd like to catch me while live, the link to that is in the description below. Anyway, until next time.